Captain Zero. Captain Zero. Research explorer in time and space. Uncharted region of the planet called Earth stands the laboratory of Captain Zero. In this secret location, known only to a few in the outside world, Captain Zero and his associates experiment in time and space to learn from the past, to plan for the future. Operating. What's going on? I've just projected back to the year 1780 and the American Revolution. What's happening? Did you see that ship? Yes. That ship is a British gunboat vulture. It just sneaked up the Hudson River and dropped anchor below the American Fort Montgomery. Golly. What is in the fort fire on it? It can't be seen in the darkness. Besides, it's flying a white flag of truth. But why is it there? Stand by to refocus. If our settings are correct, you're going to see one of the most treacherous plots in American history. Man. Bring up the plate current. Increase the target voltage. Looks like the captain's cabin, all right. But no one's there. Wait a minute. Look. Who's he? What's he watching for? Just relax, Jet. You'll find out. Sorry, Major Andre, no sign of anyone as yet. What's the matter with him? This is the agreed location, is it not? Yes, Major. This is the exact spot designated in your secret correspondence with the American general. And if I might say so, sir, a more dangerous meeting place could not be devised. For us, that is. Do you realize that we're anchored directly below the American Fort Montgomery, whose every gun is trained on that river? You need not fear the guns, Captain Sutherland. So far as anyone knows, we're here under a flag of truce on special business concerning the confiscated property of a fellow Englishman, Colonel Robertson. The American fort will not fire on a flag of truce. No, Major Andre. Unless someone discovers the real reason why we are here. 
Captain, will you please not address me as Major Andre? Until this affair is concluded, I am John Anderson. I'm sorry, Major. Okay. Mr. Anderson. What in the world could have happened? Are you sure no message of any kind has come through? Positive, Major. There's been no boat of any kind on the river. And I might add, the longer the delay, the better the chances for a slip-up. I know, I know, but there's too much at stake to turn back now. We have no choice but to wait. I only hope nothing has gone wrong. So do I, Major Andre. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. But the vulture had best not be discovered here at dawn. And still no word. This venture could cost me my life if the plot is discovered. Jack. Yes, sir? Stand by to refocus to the house of Joshua Smith. Where's that? On the north shore of the Hudson, opposite the fort. I'll handle it. You bring up the plate current and stand by to realign the target setting. But, Captain, who is Major Andre waiting to hear from? You'll find out in a minute, Jet. Is that the man? No, that's Joshua Smith, a British sympathizer. The vulture is still in the river, General, but dawn will break soon. I know. And the fate of the American colonies is in my hands. There he is, Jeff. The great American patriot and traitor, General Benedict Arnold. Benedict Arnold? The man who betrayed his country? Saved her first, then betrayed her. Man. But what exactly do you mean, sir? No time for reflection now. Are the boatmen ready? Ready, but reluctant, sir. Rowing out to a British gunboat in the dead of night is not to their liking. Give them 50 pounds of flour apiece when they return. That should ease their reluctance. Yes, sir. Now you will row out to the vulture. Deliver this letter to Captain Sutherland or Colonel Robertson. You will meet a Mr. John Anderson, whom you will row ashore. However, you will not come ashore here. I'll meet you at Long Cove, just below Stony Point, with an extra horse to bring you back. But what if something should go wrong? Nothing can go wrong. All arrangements have been made. But what's this all about, sir? Surely a matter concerning confiscate property does not require such secrecy. It's better that you don't know the details, Smith. Content yourself with the fact that you're doing an important government service. Yes, but for what side? Don't be impertinent. Now, on your way. And remember, your services will be well rewarded. Yes, sir. Make all possible haste. Yes, sir. This ungrateful country will soon wish that it had treated me with more respect. That faction-ridden Continental Congress will regret its insults and accusations. Besides, it's high time that someone did something to bring an end to this stupid war. I'd best get along to Major Andre. Too late to turn back now, even if I so desire. Yes, sir. Stand by to refocus back aboard the vulture. Yes, sir. Almost dawn and still no message from Arnold. Could he have decided not to go through with it? Yes. About an hour before dawn, Major Andre. Anderson. Anderson, and still no word. Incredible. Perhaps. Perhaps? What do you mean? Have you considered the possibility that this whole affair is a hoax, a trap? Are you serious? I'd hardly be joking at this hour of the morning. Consider Benedict Arnold's past record. At the Battle of Lexington, he armed a body of volunteers out of his own pocket. He fought against us in Quebec. And the naval battle, he fought against us on Lake Champlain, with ships built from his own funds, prevented our invasion of the United States from Canada. Not only that, in 77, he scattered Saint-Léger's army in a panic, and he routed Burgoyne, receiving little more for his pains than a shattered leg. This is hardly the stuff from which traitors are made. No, but Arnold has suffered heavy losses and public disgrace at the hands of the Continental Congress. Now he seeks revenge. Vulture ahoy! 
Who are you? Where are you bound? Miss the name from King's War. Luff alongside. This must be the messenger for Mono. Wait in, I'll find out. What's going on here? Are you Captain Sutherland? Yes. Well, my name is Smith. I was told to contact you and give you this letter. It appears to be in order. Come with me, Mr. Smith. Come in. Mr. Smith, Mr. Anderson. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Smith brings a message from General Arnold requesting a meeting ashore. On shore? We'd best make haste, gentlemen. Very well, you'd better ready your boat. Yes, sir. Major, do you realize you'll be in enemy territory? I am prepared to take my chances. Whatever happens, accept no papers from General Arnold and affect no disguise. Otherwise, if you're caught, you'll be hanged as a spy. I am aware of the risk. Conclude your business as quickly as possible and get back to the vulture. We must be away from here before dawn. I know. Good luck, Major. Thank you. Jet, stand by to refocus to Benedict Arnold on the North Shore. Yes, sir. down the river, so I cautioned your men to row me across in utmost silence. Good. We'd best conclude our business as quickly as possible. Agreed. I should not like to be caught behind the American line. Smith, you'd yes. best stay with the boatmen to be certain that they don't row off. But they wouldn't leave without... Smith! Very well. You mean you don't trust him? You can't be too cautious. The less he knows, the better. Now, did you bring the money? Yes, but uh, first, what is your plan? Briefly this. General Washington plans to move his army to King's Bridge. The French troops are on Long Island, both ready to attack New York. At that time, the British fleet should sail up the Hudson. I will surrender the key fort of West Point without resistance. The New England colonies will then be severed from the rest. The attack on New York will fail, and with it, the whole American cause. Uh, great. You best make haste, gentlemen. Dawn is breaking. Now, uh, here is the plan of the port, with all the gun emplacements, the location and quantity of supplies, as well as strategic and tactical information. Good. And uh, here is your payment. Now, if you'll excuse me, General, I must get back to the vulture at once. Of course. Smith? Yes, sir. Mr. Anderson is ready to go back to his ship. It is high time. I'll not be here when he comes back, or when you come back. But you'll dismiss the boatman, then ride post haste. The ship has been discovered. No. The guns of the fort are firing on us. Smith, dismiss the boatman at once. Hurry. Yes, sir. But I must return to the vulture at once. You can't return now. But I must. Too late, Major. Already the vulture is moving down the river. I knew this might happen. I should never have come on shore. Now I'm stranded behind enemy lines. Now, don't worry, Major. No harm will come to you. I'll see that you get back safely. But how? The boatmen are on the way up the river. Good. Smith, give your coat to Mr. Anderson. My coat? But just what are you proposing, Arnold? With a proper disguise and a good horse, you can easily make your way back to New York overland. But if I'm caught wearing a disguise, I'd be hanged as a spy. You won't be caught. I'll give you a pass that will satisfy all sentries. Give him your coat, Smith, and we'd best make, make haste. Off with your jacket. I don't like this, Arnold. This now, isn't the way it was planned. Now, stop worrying. You'll be all right. In a few hours, you'll be safe in New York. I wonder. Smith? Yes. You will accompany Mr. Anderson to neutral ground. Very well. Ready the horses? Yes, sir. I don't like this at all, Arnold. This is exactly what a spy would do. No one will suspect a thing, Major. Uh, now, here is your pass in case anyone stops you. But what if I'm searched? 
I still have the papers and plans of the fort. Hide them someplace on your person. In your boots. And stop worrying. With my name on that path, you'll not be searched. Deeds like this cannot be accomplished without some sort of risk. But the risk seems to be all mine. No, Major. If you should be discovered, my fate would be the same as yours. But your apprehensions are needless. No sentry will question the validity of that pass. But you'd better leave at once. Our mission has been accomplished. Yes, providing I regain my own line. See that he gets back to the safety of his own line, Smith. Very well. in the hands of the British. Nothing can save the revolution now. Captain, Major Andre is getting away with the plans of West Point. Don't worry, Jet. If I remember my history correctly, Major Andre will be captured on the old post road near Terrytown. Stand by to move the time machine ahead 24 hours. Yes, sir. Ready, Jet? Ready, sir. Stand by. Activate the cycle reactor. Good. Plate current up 7.9. Increase field output 6.35. Hold it. Steady. Cut cycle reactor and lock it. Stand by to activate the view screen. There's the old post road. Now, if our settings are correct, Andre and Smith will be coming along here in just a few seconds. But, Captain, if Andre gets this far, who's going to stop him? This is neutral ground between the lines. There are no American sentries here. You're right. Wait a minute. There they are. Refocus your close-up. What's wrong? We've passed safely through the American sentries, Mr. Anderson. You're now on neutral ground. You'd have no difficulty finding your own lines from here. But I don't even know the way. Just follow this road to White Plains. It's held by the British. But did not General Arnold say you were to conduct me to my own lines? Mr. Anderson, I may be in sympathy with your British, but I live in the colonies. I do not intend to risk my neck further. Besides, you've only 12 miles to go on neutral ground. You're good as home. I shall report to the General that you have passed through. Good luck, sir. Twelve miles to safety. But then Smith may be right. What harm could befall me on neutral ground? Captain, I thought you said he was captured. He's getting through. Stand by to refocus ahead. He's still going, Captain. I know. Refocus farther down the road. Hold me! Hold me here. There's a well-dressed horseman coming up the valley. I just seen him from the top of the hill. Good. I hope he's got a fat pocket for him. And a good horse and saddle. Captain, who are those two? Apparently they're freebooters, Jeff. Making a living by robbing people who pass between the lines. Will they discover that Andre's a spy? We'll soon find out. Gentlemen, you're obviously not American sentries. What is the meaning of this? We ask the questions. Get down. Could it be that you are British? Could be. Why? Because I am a British officer. I've been up country on important business. I must not be detained. Look, my gold watch to prove my statement. Well, you're a British officer, eh? Mm -hmm. So happens we're Americans. Now get off that horse. Of course. I must commend you, gentlemen, on your patriotism. One must say anything to get along nowadays. Here's my pass from General Arnold. And you'd best let me buy, or the General will be very unhappy about it. I'm on important business for the General. Maybe we'd better let him go. We've had enough trouble without General Arnold on our necks. Yeah, maybe you're right. His pass looks genuine, all right. But you still sound like a Britisher to me. You know, we could get a big reward if he's a spy. What's the pass? 
Yeah. Gentlemen, unless you wish to incur the displeasure of General Arnold, you'd best let me go at once. I hope you won't be offended, sir. But we gotta search you. You're making a grave mistake. Just oh. doing our duty. Eighty dollars continental money. Yeah. His name is John Anderson. There's nothing else on him. Maybe we made a mistake. Yeah, maybe we have. I hope you'll forgive us, sir. Just doing our duty. The pass looks genuine, all right. Uh, here, you can have your watch back. You may keep the watch. Oh, thank you, sir. Captain, they're going to let him go. Stand by, activate the materialization chamber. Yes. Hurry. Throw a quick jet. Spectral wave connections are opening. Turboard activity is increasing. Voltage is building up. Spark gaps are closing. He's transforming to electrical impulses and beginning to dematerialize. There he goes. He's gone. We haven't detained you too long, sir. No hard feeling. That's all right. Good day, gentlemen. Yeah. Fuck that man. Just a minute, Paulding. This man is a British spy. Who are you? Where'd you come from? You better take him to the nearest American outpost at once. Here's to me. If anybody's a spy around here, it's you. Now listen to me. This man is heading for the British lines with secret American documents and a diagram of the fortress of West Point. Don't be ridiculous. Take your hands off me. Look, if anybody's a spy around here, I'd take it with you for, for stopping Mr. Anderson from getting to his destination. I'll handle the list my own way. Okay, Mr. Anderson, he won't stop you now. Thank you. And as for you, my friend, I'm glad I'm not in your boots. Boots? You didn't search uh, the boots. We've done enough searching. Come here, boy. Come here. Come here. Take off those boots or I'll take them off. You wouldn't dare. Remove those boots, I said, or I'll remove them for you. You wouldn't dare. No. Now, take your hands off me. Let's go. Get off me. Let's go, I see. Ah! Stop that immediately. Stop or I'll shoot. Wait, that look. There's the diagram of the fortress of West Point. Great Scott, you're right. Maybe he is a spy. And these other papers will prove it. Look, I'll give you a hundred guineas each if you'll let me go. My horse, bridle, saddle, and all. A thousand guineas. There ain't that much money in the world. Put your boot on, Major Andre. I caught myself a spy. Okay, Jeff. Take me back. I'll give you ten thousand guineas if you'll let me go. Ten thousand guineas? There ain't that much money in the world. Besides, I think I get more money for turning you in than for letting you go. I'd still like to know how you got that pass signed by General Arnold. Go on. Golly, then if it hadn't been for those freebooters, Major Andre would have gotten through to his own lines. That's right, Jeff. Then was Benedict Arnold caught too? No. When Benedict Arnold heard of the capture of Major Andre, he escaped to the Vulture and got away. You mean he got off scot-free after betraying his country? Not exactly, Jet. Most of the British detested a traitor just as much as the Americans. Benedict Arnold died at the age of 60, a broken, unhappy man, realizing that his crime against the country he first tried to save was a most colossal blunder. Z-Men. I want to tell you how you can become a commissioned officer of the Zero Explorers in Time and Space and receive an official space passport and identification card. This passport entitles you to travel in accredited spaceships to any planet in our solar system. It also contains my official signature and photograph, as well as regulations for space travel and procedure for rocket ship blast off. Just send your name and address to me, Captain Zero, in care of this station. Your letter will be forwarded to my laboratory by guided missile, and I will immediately send you your official space passport and identification card. So, till we meet again, fellow Z-Men, good luck in time and space. Be sure to be safe.
standing by when we again transmit you to this remote location on the planet Earth, where Captain Zero and his associates will conduct another experiment in time and space.